Services fund. What's the model? The the the, little, the, wheel, the, telephone the emergency one. telephone one. You have a lot of smaller funds, but these are your larger funds here, and these are ex excerpts from the audit. And most simply, for the general fund, you have a fund balance around twenty-four million dollars as of June thirtieth, twenty eighteen. That again is not necessarily money you can just spend, um, but it is revenue. It is money available to be used. And when I say it's not money just to spend, you can't go, we're fund balance rich, we can add $250,000 to the operating cost of the county. There's a big difference between using fund balance for one-time projects and trying to use fund balance to balance your general operating money. Um, because the fund balance is something that's built up and it doesn't, it's not replaced every year. Um, so if you start digging into that for general operations such as payroll purposes or routine purchases, not capital purchases that last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, um, you will delete that, that money very quickly. Um, you have a fund balance policy that says you maintain 35% fund balance on an operating fund. And general fund being an operating fund, its operations is somewhere between 20 and 22 million from year to year. Um, so you need to maintain approximately $9 million in a fund balance, and those are approximate numbers, just eight point something, something million um, in that fund. So that is a healthy fund balance. Fire fund is very healthy as well. That particular fund is added $795,000 this year, so it's got $2.6 million. We will be likely bring a suggestion to you to use some of that fund balance to make some purchases for the fire district. All the money that you bonded out a few years ago for fire addition to make purchases and upgrades has now been spent. And so we will probably be suggesting you use some of that fund balance money to continue to replace fire trucks. Um, I don't know if some of you remember, some of you were on council, some of you weren't. There was this long wish list that came from the fire district with a lot of equipment replacement need to be done when y'all added the four mills and the additional mill. Um, back in 2014, I believe it was. Five. Well, it was four and one, so a total of five, yes, yes. Um, the four, I believe, was for stations and equipment, and the one was just for equipment, or it might be reversed. The one was just for fire stations and what equipment it might buy, and the four was for equipment. It's in the description here later on. At any rate, of course, all those fire trucks didn't get replaced. Those 1984 tankers did not all get replaced, and those tanker replacements are around $330,000 each between $300,000 and $330,000 a piece. And they, the last three they purchased are down at the main station now being stocked and ready to go out to the station they were purchased for. So we'll probably be bringing you a suggestion to use some of that fund balance to buy additional equipment to keep that inventory from replaced as we go along. Oh. <clears throat> go ahead, yes, sir. If the five mills is, if, if that bond issue is getting ready to be terminated, what do we need to do to read to re-up it. When we get to the bonds, I'll tell you that we will be suggesting to do that, yes, sir. Um, 
you don't have to pass to levy that additional millage. Yes. Continue that levy, you pull another bond, and because it's bond millage, you can't just collect it and spend it. You got to right. get a bond and pay the bond. Um, and the same restrictions aren't necessarily in place. You don't have to go to a referendum for this fire district millage. You can just levy this millage. Um, same way you did it back in 2014. Emergency services is a fairly new fund. It's two years old. It has a small fund balance. And that fund balance will slowly grow slightly from year to year. But we're not, we're, we're man managing this one. It doesn't need an excess amount of fund balance such as the general fund, but we do want to see it move up to its 35% of operations over the years as we go. Road maintenance funds are relatively new fund. I just went through this. I'm sorry for all y'all who got to hear the same thing twice, but anyway. Um, there was a roads and bridges fund within the treasurer's office. This is a road maintenance fund on the county's books. Previously, your $30 went into the roads and bridges fund, and after an audit, the treasurer would transfer it into the general fund. Um, money built up in that roads and bridges because she didn't transfer it until after an audit, and that was nothing wrong with that. It's just the way she did it because the rules that put the $30 fee in place said the $30 could only be used for roads and bridges use. Um, use. And the way to be sure that she was on, oops, the way to be sure that's all she was using it for was when the audit said this much of the county's money was spent on roads and bridges, she would then transfer that amount of money. Well, to keep from having to make all these transfers, we set up the road maintenance fund. So the $30 income from the roads and bridges fee that is on every vehicle goes straight into the road maintenance fund. And the only thing that comes out of road maintenance fund is roads and bridges budget. Um, go ahead. How much do we add to the fund balance per year on the road maintenance? We won't know until probably next year when this next audit comes out. So this is a new fund here. So the 374 is probably is several years. Well, no, no, not necessarily because we put the money that she was spent out the general fund. That's one reason for your large increase from 20 million to 24 million. The money that was spent out the general fund, we moved that money to where it was supposed to be. Offset because it's already spent out of there and need to be replaced from the road bridges fund that was sitting over there holding cash. And the road maintenance fund was then funded with the money it needed for a year's operation. So this this did add this year. Um, but uh, well, I wish the auditor was still here. Vehicles change monthly. They go up and down drastically. Oh, yeah. um, so that is little to no buffer to be prepared for. You, you need to see what this number does from year to year before you would make a change in that $30 fee up. Oh, no, no. What I was wondering is how much of a change, how much, if, if we have 374 and we're in February of 2019, what would we look at next year? You know, if we didn't spend any and it, it accrued. Well, yeah, you're going to spend, your, your whole road maintenance fee is going to come out of here. Everything for roads and bridges, the entire budget for roads and bridges will come out of here. I don't know what to take there to, unless we pull and see where we are this year and extrapolate how many vehicles, because you know the numbers do go up, income from vehicles go up a little bit in March and April because more people buy vehicles at that time of the year when they get tax rate funds. So therefore, every year annually, there are more vehicles renewed at that time. So until we see the next audit, I really don't know. I'd be scared you can't, to you can't project. I, I'd be scared you can't to project what the general fund's going to do and the fire board's going to do, but on that one, there's, until you have a, a so history. history to look at, I'd be very scared to So it. when was this um, one kind of transfer? What was the first year we What was the first year? That one was for the 16 audit. It was in the 16 audit. <laughs> um, going into 17 was when it came and talked where we started using all the checks and everything else out of the 17. Um, out of its own fund. So that fund balance is $2 million. The total fund balance for road maintenance is two, just over $2 million. So 374 just for this last year. So so how much is that fund been depleted? Do you have those two? Yeah. It's increased by 374. Not depleted. At the end of the year? At the end of the year, yes. Any other questions on the road Roads and bridges when it's time to buy a tractor that costs you two hundred seventy-five thousand or one hundred fifty thousand dollars tractor trailer replacement. You can't assume that this should zero out every year. If you do, when it's time to purchase a piece of equipment, 
you won't have any money to purchase it. Or you beg, have to beg, borrow, and steal from the general fund to make such a purchase. Okay, so. Yeah, well, it's not my thought of okay. that. Yeah, was well, I reckon I'm saying for other people here, a lot of people okay. think the governor shouldn't make any money. Well, we're not making money, but if you don't have a, a fund balance available to you, you won't be able to finance or pay for your big ticket items unless you go put more taxes on it. Well, that was my idea. If we can get some history so that we don't have to worry about any type of bond for road maintenance and equipment that we've got that we know that three years from now we're going to have to get a new motor grader right and we are saving towards that point right now yeah and so that that's part of that the vehicles going into the operating budget if all of these funds maintain the fire fund the emergency services fund this one's pretty slim for buying amazon right this minute but the road maintenance fund if they are maintaining fund balance increases over two or three years then you buy fire trucks you buy ambulances you buy motor graders without having to pay finance costs and somebody to issue the bond, you get it for the cost of the apparatus or the equipment versus paying a lawyer to do the bond, paying a paying the finance. No pun <laughs> that is <I> expensive. <laughs> I've argued that the whole time. I mean that's how that's how a healthy business does business. Right. You know and so that I would love to see us to get to that point. That's part of what y'all's moved to for the vehicles and that's part of where we're headed towards if we can stay in that same direction. Charles, how much does a, uh, and I, I, I don't know anything about the budget on road business, but a catastrophic year like we've had this year, a couple of hurricanes and all of that, I mean, does, does that operational expense go up? It does go yeah, up, but hopefully now we recover the extra man hours for cleaning up roads, the extra time, hopefully we recover that from FEMA. So that does push the budget up, but hopefully we recover that. You, a lot of times, unfortunately, you don't receive that money recovered until the next budget year, though, because it takes so long to get it. <laughs> and it's still a hope. Um, but yes, certainly there was more overtime, more payroll, more use of equipment, more diesel fuel spent to help clear and clean up behind that type of thing and repair roads that were washed. And we're still repairing roads that were washed. Um, well, so those things do cost us money. And that's part of why you maintain a fund balance, too, so that. We thought we'd operate for 1.8 million, but it took 1.95 this year. That extra 150 thousand dollars was equipment that broke, extra road, extra dirt, extra rock, extra time, and we have to be prepared to handle that. So, well, kind of to my question earlier, I think <coughs> back on what Lee's asking, that 35 percent that we use in the cross the board is a, a reserve estimate. Is that a that's a is, minimum? Is that a real life, realistic for road bridges? It may, it may be a higher percentage or for minimum it is, but as you prepare and know that you're building up to a capital purchase, that's probably, like I said earlier, that's not a minimum you need to maintain. That's where you've got to depend on someone keeping up with the assets of the county, because you individually, unless you're going to come do the job, you can't keep up those assets. And know that, that we're working together between the Roads and Bridges Department, Administration, Finance, to say, okay, that road plow is going to last us another three years, or that tractor trailer's got 600,000 miles on it, it's not going to last that much longer um, because those aren't over the road miles those are stop and go stop and go stop and go miles and we prepare for let's build that fund balance by 150 because in next year's physical year we're going to need to purchase an on the tractor trailer um, that, that's stuff we're watching that's one reason to maintain some some fund balance and prepare to spend the money the way we do it. And that's my point, just general maintenance, you know, rather than buying the heavy equipment all the time because that equipment should last us. I, I don't know, I guess it all depends on the use and things of that nature, but I have had some problems with just general maintenance of those. Um, we've got one road plow now that cannot seem to keep it out the shop. Oil and water is mixing, and so we're going to change the head gaskets in it. If that doesn't work, we'll take the next step. But the, the piece of equipment itself is not that old. So worst case scenario, it's a new engine for that. It's a twenty, thirty thousand dollar new engine versus buying a whole new two hundred fifty to two hundred sixty thousand dollar road plow. Um, so try to keep those things up and keep it going. Just like the mower, y'all allowed us to purchase for roads and bridges. Um, that mower just came in. Uh, I think it just came in, didn't it? Yeah. It just came in, and they're going to get to work with it. And once they use it a little bit, we'll see if we're going to ask you for yet another one because he's down three mowers. Um, 
and there's no way he can keep all the grass cutting the roadside and ditches cut when he's supposed to be running four and he's down three and only has one up and running. There's no way they can do that. And that was use of the fund balance. I think that's what you're all saying here, what I'm hearing, is that was use of fund balance, which able to just go buy it instead of, hey, let's go buy another barn or get on another lease or whatever. Right. You do have some money, two proprietary funds, the airport and the environmental services, and, and you can look in your audit and see those funds are stable. Um, nothing major there. Here's a quick snapshot of your general fund fund balance over the years. And as I mentioned earlier, you're certainly higher, but keep in mind as the years progress, GASB, the Government County Standards, required you to segregate out additional money as whether it was restricted for a particular use or assigned to a particular use or committed to a particular purpose. And that's what this chart represents. That you slowly decrease the oil and fund balance, and then we began to see a, a, a rise. The other sign in the blue is higher than it was, so that money is available for some one-time purchases, some one-time general use for government. You committed already a $1.5 million of that towards the vehicle program over the next three to five years to work that into the um, operating budget. So, yes, sir. Do we have a copy of that? I can get you a copy of that. Please. Um, so just by that committed amount, this yellow, it's going to grow next year because you committed funds to it. The restricted is going to grow, and I know some of you heard me say, because you received a $4 million donation for the historical society. It's in the general fund, but it is highly restricted on what it can be used for. So this orange restricted is going to grow again. Um, but one of the key areas is this unassigned fund balance that allows you, just like we've been talking about multiple times here, it allows you to make some one-time purchases and do some one-time upgrades, some one-time capital purchase purchases that need to be done to keep the county's operation going forward. Just please don't get to the idea that, oh, well, there's plenty of fund balance, so we can add $200,000 to the operating budget. No, because you'll use it up and it won't be replaced. You can't just do that. Or instead of sitting here saying, we're going to be able to take care of our purchases without adding costs for bonds when we don't have to, and costs for um, interest when we don't have to, you'll be borrowing money to keep going. You'll be doing a tan if you just eat up all your fund balance, um, which is tax anticipation of it. Darling County, you ever done a tan, the general? Uh, uh, back in the 80s. Back in the 80s. Um, some counties have to religiously do tans. We don't want to get that. This is just all the different funds. I'll get y'all a copy of this one as well, or the major funds that are history, just like you saw on the detailed chart here. I'm trying to get through this stuff a little quicker for this time. This is a breakdown the auditors did of revenues for the general fund and only the general fund, where the money comes from. You can see the majority of your money comes from taxes. The next largest chunk of your money comes from primarily the local government fund, where the state government sends you money to help offset the cost of providing buildings and facilities for DSS, DHEC, the court system, that type of stuff. And then where, do your, where does your money mainly go out your largest fund, your general fund? Well, it mainly goes out to public safety. And down here in public safety, you'll find sheriff's office, detention center, prison camp, clerk of court operations. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be getting something. There, there's a, there's a few, but you don't have any fire, EMS, or dispatch down to that because they're all over in their respective funds. Uh, people behave, we have plenty of money. <laughs> if, if, if the repeat offenders, you know, probably if the repeat offenders weren't repeat offenders, you probably have more money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, general government. Or if we move court cases and get them out of here. That, that may, be, may be true as well. <laughs> um, general government, of course, is your treasurer's office, your auditor's office, your administrative office, your assessor's office, all those general government activities. Um, any questions about this? Mr. Stewart. Yes. No, I, I, my question is, is, is all of this been put into a package? All this is in, these are in the auditor's discussion analysis. You weren't at the last meeting. No, sir. Your copy, we have your copies, and I'm sorry. Okay. Copy of the audit and copy of the manager's auditor's discussion analysis. Yes. Okay, thank you. These two slides are not. I'll have to hand, give you these with your packet. Okay. Yes, sir. Revenue. Uh, Revenue. What's the total numbers? 
the sales account. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I will have to look it up. Off the top of the head, I don't have a millage chart. I have a chart. I pull up my desk drawer every time. Yes. And each each district has its own, but yes. Okay. Roughly 60, 70 more for the county, I believe, so with the bonds in there and everything. So we can verify that number for you. <laughs> Uh, the, this graphic, the, uh, the one that you had with the fund balance, is there another graphic that captures the everything that we're doing? Because it, it'd be nice if we could... Um, Short of this one that I put together, but there's not one of the reports. I, this well, one what I was thinking about, something that the public could easily understand, that, is that graphic on public, the last one where the where the revenues come from, where it's spent. Uh, I wish everybody in the county could just see those two graphics. And well, these, these two um, we can put online. They're part of that um, audit discussion and analysis, and I don't believe that part is posted. The audit itself is posted, but right. that particular yeah, piece yeah. is not posted. Yeah, I, well, I, we I can would, add these to that and put it out there as well. I wish you the press would take those two graphics and put them on the front page with the, on the headline of this is where your money comes from, where they go, this is where it goes. I mean, that, that, that is about as easy a, yeah. we, we can We can make those available very easily. We can post those on the web and make sure they get them if they want them. So anybody in the public can get to those, we'll make sure of that. That is if they have access to them. You know, if they have access right. to the computer services, but you remember now, we're full county and we don't have access. Everybody doesn't have them. Right? Well, we, we did make sure that they're at the library, so the libraries have printed copies, and we'll make sure they have printed copies of the discussion analysis as well. But we, we did send those to the libraries, right? right. Yeah. Here's a quick review of your bond indebtedness. Um, General obligation bonds, you have $2.8 million out as of June 30th, 2018. Revenue bonds, you have 400, I can't read that from over there, about $456,000. In capital lease, you have about 2.75. Notes payable, you had 52. Now remember, this is June 30th of 2018. Um, and then you have 510 in annual leases here, then 18.5 um, over the business type, which is your airport and um, landfill. And then your net pension liabilities and other liabilities here, such as unpaid sick leave, things that are owed to employees if they choose to use them. Um, these numbers come straight from the state, state pension and retirement system. They tell us how much liability is out there. Should everybody retire, the county not bring in another penny, this is how much money you better have to pay the debt. Um, you only recently started carrying these numbers on your audit this year or last year? No, two, two, two years ago, I'm sorry. Um, as a requirement for a general accepted standards. So but let's break some of this down in a little more detail. So your general obligation bonds. You have two 2014 general obligation bonds. One of them was your one mil and one of them was your five mils. And one of them will be paid off during this budget year, 2019. The other one will be paid off during 2021. And then your 2014 refunding GO bond, which is your 3.3 mils, it's on regular, regular side of the taxes. Brought in 3.57 million, and it will be paid off in the 2020 budget year. So to break that down, to, go ahead, yes, sir. Can you back it up a second? Yeah. Are we making more than 1.4 on our investments? I have no idea. We should ask the treasurer. That. I, I'm pretty confident we are. I better not say for sure, but I'm pretty well, sure. We're not. We need to pay these off. That's what I think I'm he's saying. up to two percent or so now okay. on his return under the state pool. Do you, you know my chance? You remember him saying? I did not say. Uh, I thought that it had gone up and they were anticipating it going higher again for the next cycle that they, they're they investing in. I'm pretty sure the treasure's up above 2% now for investments on the okay. just, um, with just And just to, re, to recap, that 2014 $350,000, $3.75 million bond, the purpose of that was for acquiring construction, furnishing equipment, general infrastructure improvements to the I-2340 Industrial Park, renovation, expansion, and or relocation of the county courthouse and related facilities. And then you refunded a 1994-1998 general obligation bond that weren't quite paid off at the time that you issued that bond. So that was the purpose of the 3.3 bills you have under general obligation bonds, under taxes, 
and then of course you have your description above and below that part of the paragraph of what your 2014 to 2015 bonds were for the fire district. This just shows you where we are with those payments. The payment will be made of principal and interest memorized for 2019, 2020, and then paid off in 2021. All of those. Okay. Just a quick review of your borrowing and debt limit of issuing general obligation bonds without going to the public for a vote. If you take your overall assessed property valuation, multiply it by 8%. So your overall property assessed property valuation, the number for this June 30th, 18 audit was 2.32 million. I mean 232 million and some change. That left you with a debt capacity of 18.5 million without any special vote by the public. Well, since you only have how much out? You only had 2.8 outstanding at this audit time. You had a margin of the ability to borrow. 16.7 million dollars in general obligation bonds. I'd say that's very helpful. Um, some governments are close to bonded out and they only have a small percentage of ability to borrow without having a referendum. And of course you're actually slightly healthier than that now because we're in the 2019 year and the bond payments are already been made, correct? <coughs> so you're doing well with the debt margin. Here's a revenue bond out of the airport. Uh, you can only issue a revenue bond. You can prove you got revenue to pay for the bond. And so the hangar fees at the airport pay this bond. This bond was issued so you can make hangar improvements at the airport. It won't be paid off until 2025. Bond. What's the interest rate? I do not know. Oh, okay. Where's that? It's a revenue bond, so it's not covered by the full taxing fate of the government. It's covered by revenue generated from right. hangar sales. You had a, um, a note that you did with PD Electric back in 2009 where you borrowed some money from them. That is actually paid off now as the time this audit was issued. There was one payment left this year's payment, and that's paid off. So that's no longer in place. There were two items mentioned under the audit as areas that need improvement revenue receivables and unavailable revenue and segregation of duties. I've just said this for 23 minutes, but I'm not going to say it. Previously, the auditors did just about as much to prepare the financials to be audited as they did just audited. <clears throat> so when the new firm came in, they aren't going to prepare any financials to be audited. That's not the auditor's responsibility or place. Their job is just to audit them, just to review them, to tell you if you're following generally accepted standards, if there's an area they see improvement or if they see any real problems. Um, so there were 11 to 13, how I many you do? <clears throat> 11 to 13 notes of suggested improvement for the 2015 and 2016 audits when they came back. Uh, we're down to two notes uh, where they suggest improvement. One of them is the amount of taxes charged, the amount of taxes collected, and the amount of taxes left to be owed and, and delinquent. And that is really an issue we're working with our software vendor QS1 with, um, where the auditor has a responsibility of entering the taxes, the treasurer has a responsibility of collecting the taxes, then they go to delinquent, the delinquent taxes collector has a responsibility of collecting the delinquent taxes, and at any given time, exactly what the accounts receivable are, exactly what it is. And that number does change every day. <clears throat> the reason I say it changes every day is every time somebody goes to the auditor or to the assessor and the assessor says, oh yes, there was a problem with your assessment. They go to the auditor, the auditor makes an adjustment. Well, that just changed your receivables. Or somebody comes in and they pay taxes that was from last year and they were delinquent before we go to tax sale. Well, that just changed your receivables. So every day that receivable number is adjusting and changing. And we're working with QS1 so that any given time that number is printed out, we can lock into that June 30th deadline or that June 30th time, and it be repetitive from that point forward. We can always go back. All the changes occur between this date and that date. Um, the segregation of duties, they didn't find any problems. And you'll notice that when you see your analysis, there were no issues found, but they suggest some additional segregation of duties 
of the person collecting your money, the person posting the bill, the person making the deposit. Um, and Sherman's been in conversation with them and we do plan to have them come sit down with us and say, where did you still see you think you've got an issue so that we can button it up and tighten it up so you can remove all notes? It's not uncommon to have notes. It's not gonna sit here and name another single county. But Sherman and I went to another county and found one of these exact same notes on one of our neighboring county from their, their previous audit from this past year as well. So they do happen. We just would like to get them all gone. <laughs> we would like to see uh, no notes and no suggested improvements if at all possible. Um, so I don't well, want I think to segregation is a big deal. Um, that that one does need to be worked out. The other, you may, like you say, you may get it every year and you just know that's going to happen. But we do need to, put, if we need to do a better job of segregation of duties, then we need to do it. Uh, because then uh, we're giving we're giving the picture to the public that we're complying with what it should be done and, and then it's done in regular businesses. Well, I'll give you one, one instance they mentioned there. They, like I said, they found nothing wrong, but we have a number of different accounts out yeah. there. Um, Historical Commission has a checking account. Sheriff's Office has a few checking accounts. Not that finance administration is going to tell them how to spend that money, but it's all governmental money and somebody else should be looking at it. And this past year, or starting this year, and you did it this past year too, I'm just not sure they took the right note of it, he reconciled, reconciled the final bank statement for the year so that somebody else is looking at it. It doesn't mean there was anything wrong, but it is public money and somebody other than the person who's deciding where it gets spent needs to look at it and review it. Um, and the auditors are not the ones to look at it and review it so that we get a check mark there. They're looking to make sure we look at it and run. Right. Yeah. Those things are, are being worked out as we go. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go over just a few projects. And of course, the last project on this list is the courthouse, but I just want to update you on a couple things. First one's hospitality tax. And I know you probably can't read this, but this is really just kind of keep me on track. Um, current hospitality tax collection. I do not have the month for month for 16 to 17 because um, the former treasurer kept them on a ledger. I have them where I can print them out and add them up, tally them up, but I didn't have time to do that. Where currently they're kept where I just go push a button and move them over. Um, but you totally brought in about $214,000 in the first physical year, FY16, because you were missing a month um, when the hospitality tax started being collected. FY17, you brought in about 235. And I can't read that. That 203. 203. And that number's go up and down based on um, people spending money. And currently, through January, you're 123 for this year. But just an idea how hospitality tax comes in. Now, something else I want to make sure you know. You'll see these numbers in here was only 2,000, but there's 28,000. That's most likely the time it was posted. This, this chart shows you when the treasurer posted the tax, okay? We get that hospitality tax from the preceding month. It is likely it was not down to $2,000, but because of the high level of taxes coming in, property taxes coming in, all these didn't get posted until the first day or two of January. And also it pays off for staff with right. Christmas. And right. Um, so while you can look at that chart and generally see that it's pretty much even with the exception of in October, the number is usually a little bit higher because the race occurs in September and there's usually somewhere between eight and nine thousand dollars that comes from America for the hospitality tax they collect occurs during the trial. <coughs> Otherwise it's semi-level. Um, but right now Lake DARPO was where we were focusing on spending hospitality tax on Lake DARPO Clubhouse. Uh, we hope to have brought you this past February's meeting a proposal to upgrade that clubhouse but all the bids came in way too high well over the budget amount of money we were targeting for. So we have a meeting, I believe it's next week, with the um, people who originally bid on the project for them to come in and talk to us about what can we do to scale that project down, get it within budget to replace that clubhouse. So maybe we will have you something by the March meeting on replacing that clubhouse. And then another item that had been discussed, and in my mind, <coughs> of course I take whatever direction y'all give me, but in my mind, one of the next projects would be welcome and entrance signs throughout the county on major highways. Um, you know, most counties have these things that kind of add to the beautification of the county, and that's something certainly you could spend hospitality tax on. 
we still all continue to put the $35,000 of this tax over into the general fund <coughs> to help with the cost of fire EMS and law enforcement, and we moved the um, fire and EMS out to their funds. Some portion of that money, uh, that's not to give those departments more money to spend, that's to offset the cost that already is spent because of the up, up staffing and excess that occurred during the race week. Um, yes, sir. <coughs> what about the dam at Lake DARPO? Lake DARPO Dam. We have engaged an engineer to give us a perspective on what it's going to take to replace that dam. Um, they originally told us that they were, DA told us they were changing that dam to a high hazard dam simply based on the car count occurring on, um, oh goodness, not 52, I want to say 15 so bad, on 52 just below the dam. And so one thing that engineer will probably do is negotiate with them that, wait a minute, we just had a break in the emergency spillway due to the hurricane and there was no damage to the road below there. Do you have to classify us as high hazard? Um, and try to keep us as low as possible to repair that. But until, until we get some numbers back from that engineer, I don't know what to tell you as far as repair. But it was not the primary spillway that broke, it was an emergency spillway that broke to the side. Well, we are, yes sir. Um, just look at the numbers, I'm not, the, the population is, is pretty flat, but there's nothing that says, I mean, that number in 17, I think it was around $19,000 a month, now it's under $17,000 a month. So I would just say that a deeper dive in there and see where those variations are. I mean, there's nothing to indicate why there should be a $2,500 a month drop in this one average. So. Well, if you if you double the next one, you're back up above. Well, there's, I mean, still pretty, right. from 17, 18, 19 projected are still down. So either, you know, yeah, something's happening. No, no. 123 and 123 would be higher than any number up there. Two right, you're looking at total? Yeah, but if I'm you, saying you'll divide that by 7, you divide 235 by 12. Right, I'm talking about this year. I know this current year. If you took this current year and say if you kept collections similar to where you are, you should have the highest year you've had yet. You just divided it by seven. I don't know if you took that. I'm just saying I did look into the line items where they are. I mean, there's some variation why there's a drop. I'm not, I'm not considering may, anything other than we, we will check, but you may find, um, well, of course, as restaurants come and go, that'll yeah. fail, but you may find your baseline has a variation, well your baseline definitely has a variation, there's no if, so it's yeah. about it. Um, did I add that one up? Well, if you're at 214, 235, and 246, other than a, a bad fiscal year 18 at 203, you're on an upward climb all the way through. If you continue February through June yeah. with it, then you'll... And one thing we have done is Codes has secured a list of all like DHEC licensed cooking facilities in the unincorporated area. We're going to marry that list to the list of who's paying these hospitality taxes and make sure we don't have somebody out there operating the best we can, operating a DK licensed um, kitchen mm -hmm. and not paying us hospitality tax on because they're doing prepared foods and sell it to the public. We should be getting hospitality tax on yeah. You know what, not, too, not, that not. FY18 year, which would have been July 1st of 17 through June 30th of 18, did we have uh, one of the larger restaurants in Hartsville closed during that time? I mean, we can point to three or four restaurants that we know are really high. And I, I'm not trying to pick on any better than the other, but if Mr. B's didn't operate for a month, we'd see a difference. If this Burger King up here, which is inside the county, didn't operate for a month, we'd see a huge difference in those numbers. So if any of those were closed during that period, I don't know when Shug's was down, um, we would see a significant change in, in these numbers. Um, so that might be something to go back and look and see if any of them were down. I mean, if that Burger King was down for two weeks, <coughs> it was down for a few days or something for remodeling. I mean, was done in 2008. Mr. Charles, um, yes. Well, Shug was down, a lot of house closed down. That sure did. Um, they remodeled on. Um, the Burger King is, well, no, that part, King well, well the, the lighter side would have been City Hearts, so that would have yeah. popped up under our eyes. Okay. And the Burger King over there would not have popped up under our eyes. Yeah, now, this now, now is that the, in the county now? Sure. Huh? The new Burger King, is that in the county now? City not, City? not that one in Hartsville. Okay. This one over here in Darlington is inside the county now. Okay. So you got Sarah's Porch. It's from over here. Sarah's Porch, yeah. As, as soon as, every time one comes on, it, it would benefit us. So mm -hmm. we can look in there and see what happened. Um, it'll, it'll take a, a long time. My, my only point was that it's, 
17 was average 19,500 a month. This current year is averaging 17,500. We might look at so a I'm just saying if you're going to do capital projects or have projects based on a number, just know what number. I don't want to go spend 20000 and just end up with 17000 I can show you. I was going to pull my spreadsheet up, but I think when I estimated income, I estimated about $210,000. So that the estimate of income for projects coming forward would be, be conservative over the income, <laughs> yeah. make sure the funds would be there. But the balance, but you, the balance as of January was four fifty six. No. As of January thirty first was four hundred fifty six thousand dollars. That's the after we. That's after everything. After we paid a couple of major ones. That's after everything you've already done, right? Yeah. Not including DARPO. DARPO has to pay. That. But, but the Lamar your, and. That's after Lamar has been paid. Yeah, after all the projects are done, yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, since you brought up Lamar, what's been the? I've been working, so I had not What's been the reaction? Uh, it, and they just finished getting the, equip, the, the kitchen equipment in there and hooked up, so we had not had to have an official opening yet. The, the kitchen, how long? How long we had to get the next Matter of fact, I don't even know if they put the, oh, the CO's not even in. Yeah. I don't even think they put the grease in the fryer yet, but they finished getting it all hooked up. So. But everyone who's involved with over there, the, the, people, the people in the Lamar area are grateful to County Council for doing that for them since it's County on the field. And then, um, and I told them what would happen if they had been for council. And they were pleasantly pleased with it. Well, and that's, I know they had big plans if they could do things with the girls' softball and with smaller right. tournaments. And the, but that was, no one wants to go to a to, to travel unless you've got the facilities there for the girls to eat, for nice bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all those sorts of things, because you don't want to put everybody in the van and then go and then come back. Well, that's exactly right. That's yeah. what it is over there now where you can. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Like right there. Nice bathrooms, kitchen, and the cops are doing some work out there too. So, the lounge and the out there this year, so that'd be great. Yeah. Mr. Stewart, I'm going to digress. There's an event coming in October that was here two years ago. Huge economic impact here on this Labrador Creek trial is coming on the There'll be about 11 or 1200 entrants into this tournament. These are high dollar, but they're looking for uh, trainers and owners from all over the country. Last time it was 48 states, right? but they're looking for places. And I don't know what small ponds we have or recreational facilities throughout the county, but you know, I think it'll be an opportunity for the county wide impact. I give with you on the they're, they're filling up hotels in three weeks at a time. And they're using mostly a Cooper Black area. But for the county, I think exactly. I don't want to tie time here. But you know, if we've got some, I don't know, DARPO or something. So we, can make, we can see if Parks and Rec or Recreation make a list of these things. Have them available. Maybe they can contact private landowners if they want to rent well, a pond can, for but, something. But they're going to be in the county for <coughs> better than three weeks in October. So um, if we can get a mailing out to some of Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just want to bring it up here. I think it would impact. Well, sometimes find out from codes what's going on 340 out here. I already heard it from Motel going up. Where's that at on three? Right there. I can get off the interstate. Oh, okay. Somebody might have applied for a permit. All right. Quick, some information. I was asked to give some, uh, some summary information about accommodations tax as well. This is a chart that kind of gives you a breakdown. And Jeanette, um, Clerk, we got this from, I believe her name is Shannon Attaway, with DOR, who is our prime, one of the primary contacts in DOR for accommodation tax. So for FY 16, 17, and 18, the unincorporated, this is the amount of tax generated and sent to us for accommodations tax at the unincorporated part of the county. This is the amount generated for the city of Darlington, the city of Hartsville, and then there was a, a, a little bit for Lamar and Society Hill in those particular given years. Um, I can make sure we give y'all a copy of this at the next meeting or email it out to you. So, of course, the city of Hartsville with the hotels over there has a significantly higher amount of accommodation tax. And by the way, for this particular chart, when she was emailed this in May, May and June was not on the chart. So that's why this is a little bit lower here. I'm pretty confident. Is that correct? May and June were not on the charge. This is even okay to the page. Um, but just the, the main, my main focus here is 
you don't want to collect hardly any accommodations tax out of the county. Yeah. And if you look at the chart, most of those are bed and breakfasts or um, easterly wind up in um, the lake. But the county receives a good portion of accommodations tax money, I reckon you call it the Robin Hood effect. And it's really based on the money generated in the large accommodations tax locations. So any county not generating $400,000 of its own accommodations tax, once the state receives in, sends money back to everybody who collects accommodations tax, they divvy up a portion of that money left and they send it to us. So a lot of that's based on all those rooms in Myrtle Beach, all those rooms in Charleston, all those rooms in Greenville, Spartanburg, Columbia, uh, <coughs> Hilton Head, all, all those rooms. And so we've been receiving somewhere, we've budgeted anywhere from fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of revenue. And where's the actual line on? Oh actually. And how much money actually came in. And as you know, last year because of a amount of money did not come in like we expected. Uh, we didn't receive it from the state. You only gave out $25,000 of accommodation tax money this year. Well, we received another kick of actual revenue that came in. So the committee that, when did they first meet you that? It will be March 21st. March 21st. That committee will have more money available this year. No, no, no. 65,000. I'm looking at the line. The yellow line. Right. We only gave away 25 last year. They'll be giving away $65,000 in accommodations tax money this year. So that committee will have quite a bit more money. They'll have more closer to what they had been working with over yeah. the last several years than they did this past year. So the municipality, is it on the same, like Darlington, the city of Darlington, do they receive a separate pool of funds? from accommodations tax? I don't know their detail. I'm pretty confident they receive what they generate, plus they receive some of that Robin Hood. I, don't, I do not know those details. So, I'm not part of the city's operation. I'm so in the heart for it, they'll receive their 144 back? They'll receive their money back, and they may receive some of the Robin Hood, what I call the Robin Hood funds as well. I don't know what percentage of those funds they would receive. Well, I can find that out and clarify for you. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know if, if Ms. Bishop wants to speak to it, but every time you go looking for that information, it's kind of hard to get. They'll always tell you a formula, a formula. But it's kind of hard to nail it down. Well, tell me exactly. Because if you give me the formula, I can calculate it myself. So the dollar sixty-four that Lamar charged, they got it back. They, they, sh they, they should have got it back. They, okay. So they should have got all of it. Until you get past the 400, this, whatever is generated inside that city, they get all of that back. They should get all of that back, yes. Okay. Darlington, unless I'm mistaken, and I, please forgive me, man, because I don't keep up with exactly what happens yeah. to them, but I'm pretty confident they get all back that they generate. And I don't know what portion of Robin Hood funds you'd say that they get. Okay. But it's obvious if we're getting around $50,000, we're getting some $40,000 worth of Robin Hood funds. Right. Uh, I don't know what they but get. But we're representing 68,000 people. Right. Darlington, the city representing and my guess, seven to eight thousand people. My guess is they probably get some small percentage. The number for the county may be sixty thousand dollars, and they get a little. Each one of the cities get a little piece, and then the chunk of it comes to the county on the Robin Hood. That's my guess, but I yeah. have nothing to prove that. All right. Were any questions about accommodations tax? In fact, that committee's act. Is there one person to replace? I reckon I can't go and tell you. Yeah, um, Mr. McFarland? David McFarland, he's a represent citizen at large. He called. He's gonna have to have um, knee replacement surgery, so he will want some. So he's asked to, to be re else. to be replaced for this particular year. Um, so that's something that'll come before you during the next council meeting for y'all to place somebody that citizen at large because that committee's got to go to work in March. Is that correct? Yes. So, uh -oh. where did you? <laughs> um, let me see if I can skip something real quick. No, I can't skip anything. Can we take a five minute break? That's a good idea. Let's take a five minute break. That's not ours, that's a state road. <laughs> Nothing other than the state still trying to raise money um, to be able to pay for the damn portion. Uh, 
accommodation tax. Uh, Darlington County can, if it chooses, move to exempt the Sunday Blue Laws. We've already done that for alcohol. We did that. We had to do that by referendum and the people voted for it. I think we need to look at the possibility of doing the same thing for businesses. Now, what it would allow is all our dollar generals and family dollars that are out there in the county to fairly compete with Walmart in the cities. Um, it would allow people who want to go shopping to be able to do it on Sunday morning. Now, would I go? No. I don't work on Sundays. I've always taken a position that's my day of rest and I'm going to take it. Uh, I happen to follow the Hebrew version which starts Saturday night at 6 and goes to Sunday night at 6. Um, but that's just a, a choice of mine. Um, a lot of counties in the state have done this. You've got some examples uh, in your handout of, of th I think, three different ordinances. Um, my preference, frankly, is the Sumter ordinance because it does a good job of spelling it out without being too wordy. It provides that employees who want that time for their Sunday services or whatever to not be penalized by the employer. It guarantees them protection from them from the employer making them work on a Sunday. Uh, our Jewish brethren want Saturday off, okay? Uh, because that's when their holy day is. Our Muslim brothers would want Friday off because that's their holy day. Well, we already take care of Friday and, and Saturday. We work those two days. Yes, we are Christian. We have been called a Christian nation, but we are a multi-religious nation now, uh, and we need to learn that. And we need to learn that not everybody goes to church on Sunday morning. Okay, whether it's because of religion on Friday or Saturday, or it's because they just don't want to go to church. I can't stop them. I can't make them. What I want to do is provide them the ability to be able to do to shop on Sunday prior to 1.30. Uh, this ordinance would allow that. Uh, it would give us a chance to um, provide those stores that are now out in the county, Dollar Generals and Family Dollars, or Mom and Pop if they want to, to open up and provide services and supplies uh, for people um, so that uh, when the baby's diapers have run out, they don't have to run the hardful to the Walmart uh, to get the diapers. So, uh, yes, it's my idea. I'm going to recommend that we uh, put this on the agenda for first reading uh, in March, uh, and I'm open to any questions anybody might have. I have a question. Dollar General Walmart opened for Sir, going to Lamar over before 1.30. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> Lamar already passed it. Huh? Any question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, well, then let's make legal what they're already doing. <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not make the... If let's you don't like that, I just don't make them criminals. Yeah. 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 If, if okay. you read about this, is one of those laws that's very not very well enforced, and there are some that are breaking it just because they don't know, and because this store can open in, inside this jurisdiction, but why can't this one open over here? So. Well, I can tell you between the Dollar General at the crossroads of Hoffmeyer and Tipsville Highway and the Dollar General at, at the crossroads of 151 Center Road, the, the Sunday morning traffic to pick up things on the way to church is just, it's just, I mean, I, I think we need to do it just to, I said, so we don't criminalize those who are doing it Make it, make it a fair playing field. I'm fine. But that, that the one that's going to Sunday Road, right there with all fields. Coming down to Syracuse, yeah. Yeah, that was going to be, that was going to be huge. Plus the money goes for my yeah. goodness. It's, yeah. no. I only have one topic left on the list. Right. So before I switch over, is there any topic anybody wants to discuss? Because this is a, being a work session, just a time to have discussions, um, talk about things. You're not here to vote and make. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one more. Let's pass these out real quick. 
He's going to pass out a copy of a couple of different counties' ordinances on stack, stack, <laughs> tax installment payments um, so that y'all can have an opportunity to look at those and review them. We're still working on some of the details um, to try to prepare a ordinance for us. Um, and then, of course, we'll go before y'all decide. It's, it's just like any other ordinance. Y'all got to have three readings on decide whether you want to do it or not. Um, but, of course, it would give the taxpayers an opportunity to pay installment payments on their up and coming taxes due at the end of the year or generally at the end of the year um, for the preceding year but this has to go in place and you'll notice when you read this it has to go in place early enough so that they notify the treasurer by a certain date i can't remember that's in december or january that they need to they want to start making installment payments on the following year's taxes so it's truly installment payments and the law is very specific when did the installment payments have to be made and um, we just don't we can do this you just don't have the autonomy to say you'll allow 12 monthly equal payments uh, state law is very specific on how the payments have to be made uh, but it does provide the option if you'd like to provide the option well i commend you on doing this because this just happened last when the last month well, the gentleman came to the i tell you, Ms. bishop did a quick research <laughs> on, getting, on getting these examples well, together well, and and that and then we will turn it into one for us you know. Yeah, Joyce, we've been talking about this since the last time Belinda was elected, and you would not even think about it. So well, it has not been. <laughs> unfortunately, she might not even think about it. But you know, this one county council makes a decision, and the yeah. treasurer has to do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you. You this is one of those instructions yeah. to collect the tax. Um, it wouldn't take effect until <coughs> it, it almost no way you can take effect. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. But we get passed yeah. by July first, and it can take effect. Right. Right. It could be. It could affect them doing installments for 2020 taxes. Yes. How do they prove? How do they know what 2020 taxes are going to be? They're estimated from the 2019 taxes. Okay. That's, yeah. Okay. But so the last payment may be actually more. The last payment would make the difference. Yes. So yeah. and yeah. they yeah. send yeah. out yeah. notices. Jeff, well, when I talked to Jeff about this when he was working for Brent, uh, Belinda, what they'd like to do is have it as a bank draft type thing, not that a check comes in right. on this one and maybe we didn't get it. They is set up where they bill a credit card or they bill a, it's almost like a subscription. And oh, then okay. on the last one, then it automatically generates that last notice, which may be above or below based on what the right. um, actual notice. Yeah. But that, I don't know if you can require it to be a draft or not. I haven't, yeah, I've just done some preliminaries on that. I don't know if you can require that part. If you do, you'd have to put it in the ordinance to require that part. Well, that was what he was saying, to keep, up, to keep things as simple as possible. If it, because QS1 has talked with them that there is a program that creates that so that you instantly you can pop up and see that everyone who's made their payments or if someone if a bank draft has not gone through because there were not funds in that it pops up so you don't have a person who's having to cycle through everything well, no. but this should have to do it with a check too in order to be able to pop, you know even if that manual in or a check i don't know i'm not sure if you'll be able to put that restriction on that i'm going to look at the state law part real close well it might be those who wish to do this like i would be happy that here is my debit card. Yeah. I, I will pay my 2019 taxes for, for 2020. You just start taking right. it out and don't give them a debit card because then you're going to pay a percentage above that. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want a yeah. check right? Why do we yeah. do that? Do what? With a debit card? Because they, the bank charges us fees. Yeah. 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 The system. All banks do that? Yeah. Right. yeah. It's the well, when I go it's actually to the merchant now, services. I have to say a percentage. It's, it's, it may not be your bank that you're putting the money in. It's the merchant services that that AC that transaction that not AC but that transaction goes through. Yeah. But I would, I would be happy because I have to pay my taxes. And that's just one more thing I don't have to worry about yeah. from from December. This no car taxes also. No, no. This is just property. property. This is property tax. We'll get you some more of the fine details and make sure that. Um, all the intricacies of the state laws worked out in there and see if it's possible to restrict it to some type of card or draft. But there are specific deadlines in there, and if it's those deadlines, they're off the system. So that won't be up to somebody. I don't think that'll be up to somebody in the uh, office here that if you miss the payment deadline, you're off the system. 
It, so it won't be a, it shouldn't be the treasurer having to worry about somebody mad at him or her because they were two days late with the payment. The law is very specific in how it can work. So, I'm we'll make sure you got copies. Really good as long as we know that they know the rules are all about. You all, you did a wonderful job in this. <laughs> Some things are easy to get done. Some things aren't quite so easy to have. Did I want to do a wonderful job? Yes. No, yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you. The only other topic I have for you, unless y'all have another one, is a discussion about where we are with the courthouse, what plans you would kind of expect us to be making. And of course, you can't make a final vote decision here. This is a work session. It's time to have a discussion. Um, but I have some slides to go back through financing options if you want to. You have copies, you know, you received a copy of your December sometime the 1st of December, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's just got a, a 30,000 foot overview of the cost of the different options that have been waiting for a while to get perspective from this um, engineering and consulting firm. So it's here, I can go over whatever you want to go over. We are looking at some finance, not financing, some fixing options at the courthouse for the HVAC system, air, air handling system. They just approved a few months ago the $70,000 to change the drainage system for the current HVAC setup. Um, and I'll tell you, when they cut some of those pipes down, those pipes were just full. There was no way water, condensation water was flowing. That's why it would overflow through a, uh, a uh, fan coil unit on the side and drip down to the ceiling tiles on the ceiling on the floor below. Or it would pour out on the floor such as in the auditor's office and kept the, the carpet saturated wet in it. Um, so they work on fixing those here and there along the along. We're getting prices on changing all those fan coil units out just to change those out because they're so rusted and, and, and dilapidated inside. Those are the original ones for the building. Um, Chiller's not that old downstairs. How old's the chiller? It's not 50 yeah, it's not years, years old. old the, the furnace is still original, and so we're waiting on a quote. We thought they'd have that to us before today, but uh, a quote on changing the furnace itself out. <coughs> we're we're waiting on a quote for the court. The large courtroom itself is almost its own environment. We'll talk about that before. Such high ceilings, such a large airspace. Um, the top of the building is on little subclimate within the building. So we're waiting on the quote of putting in a heat and air system specific to that room to keep the air turned over, to keep the air filtered, <coughs> um, so that we don't have building problems in the building. Because of course, if you don't control the humidity in the building, you have a chance of having building problems. Um, we're working on the law library, working with the clerk of court and the Garden County Bar. The law library, most of those books are being disposed of. And certain books are going to be kept, and then we're going to do a thorough cleaning of that room. That room has an issue with building it because you have books in there that are old. <laughs> Quite old. Just didn't look like over two on Friday. Um, well, he, he's looking, he's getting whatever he thinks he needs to hold, but some of those other books are just going to the trash. And some other some attorneys have asked for some books and whatnot. And of course, they're holding a bunch of them that they think are still useful on and on and on. Most of that stuff is available on electronic systems such as the law book. Um, so we're looking at a project working with the court, court working with family court to give them a little larger um, family court room as a proposal to come to y'all for remodeling to make the accommodations for waiting areas for family court room better. Um, they all kind of wait in one room, both sides, and sometimes it's a contentious situation um, or wait spill out and just wait in the hallways. Yeah, we're working all those as quotes as, as I don't want to call them piecemeals, but they are to some extent piecemeals. Small fixes to deal with issues we have in the building, not replacing the entire building. Well, that, I mean, if we had $40 million today sitting in a, in a duffel bag, it'd take us three or four years to build a new facility. I think mean, three years we could build one if you, everything moves smooth and ready to go. Right. But for the next three years, we've got real problems with family court. I mean, so. We cannot put off fixing those problems. I mean, because we haven't even decided what our fix is going to be for a courthouse. So, on a best case scenario, you know, if Perry gave us forty million today, it still be another three years. So I, I think we got to do public safety wise. 
we got to do what we got to do to fix the probate court issues, the family court issues, the, that the chiller unit, but, uh, legal, well, the floor. I get those things. Yeah. And we already had, yes, sir. No, I, 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 I'll speak with you. Uh, you know, we, we know it's going to be probably close to a million dollars just to change all those things. Um, and get us from the vacuum systems in place that try to switch valves, which is full of oil. And they've been telling them for years now. Not our valve. Um, that your system's dilapidated. You, you can't continue to use the system. A lot of times, Andrew or um, somebody else has to go from floor to floor, unit to unit, and move vacuum tubes when it's time to switch from heat to cool because there's too much oil in the old vacuum lines for the vacuum system to work to switch them. But in the for somewhere around a million dollars, and that's not finalized just yet. It was nine hundred thousand, and then it had a plus plus on there. Um, we we'll change all those fan coil units out. Get rid of all the rust pans in those fan coil units. Um, go to an electric valve system where the solenoid valves are with electric wire cutting them on and off, and go from heat to cool, and things like that. But we'll bring all that stuff before you because all those are high enough dollar figures that they'll have to come before council to be approved one by one as we go. Uh, improve security for the judges once they're inside the facility so they're not walking across the people who are pre-trial or pre-conviction that are on trial. Um, they may have to go down the same a short path at some point, but there would be isolation that you know is closed off when the judges come to the elevator, step in the courtroom, versus the judges got to walk literally between them, sitting beside the walls to get there. There's just some possibilities of improvement like that when we're making some of these renovations. And we're working on all those proposals right to you. We just don't want to assume that you have no other ideas um, and don't want to assume that you're going to definitely do these things, but we'll bring them forward to you. I reckon I do want to know at some point, do you want any particular work done on pursuing information for a referendum of any type, whether it be a capital project sales tax or whether it be a general obligation bond. If we need to do that type of work, we need to know we need to do it or we can't have it ready for it. Um, this other stuff, we can get quotes and prepare all day long for what we need to do to maintain and keep the facility up. And then y'all decide and meet what you want to execute that or not. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, now the probate court, there have been renovations in that courtroom already. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, you need to go up and take a look at them. Uh, the break room has been moved from the second floor to the fourth floor, uh, so that that's now been opened up. Um, and I think Judge Lawson's had, well, I think, I think he's in a lot better shape. Uh, I don't like the way he has to come into the courtroom, but that's, you know, that's his business as to where he puts his office. Okay, his personal office. Uh, family court, if they move, as, as, as the clerk is trying to work out to put it on the fourth floor, uh, we would be able to put the courtroom, the, the family court judges are already on the fourth floor, uh, so their offices are there. They might be moved around based on how you configure the courtroom, which could be built in uh, if we get all the books out of the library uh, and uh, we can make a nice family courtroom out of that. Uh, there's a one floor elevator that runs from the fifth floor to the fourth floor. That elevator sits next to the door uh, entry, entrance into the fifth floor courtroom. It was originally built so that the visiting judge could come from the fourth floor in a visiting judge's office to the courtroom. For some reason, in the 1980s, they moved that courtroom back to the back, uh, and now the judge has to walk past all the prisoners to get into the courtroom. If we can put that visiting judge back down on the fifth, on the fourth floor, he can come in. You know, we still got a problem downstairs. I don't know how we alleviate that problem. I'm just talking about once you're inside the building. We can get, get the judge to the fourth floor, then he has no, he will not have any contact with prisoners because he'll come straight into the courtroom. The prisoners will be behind a, a, a pull drawer door, whatever you we want. We put up a solid door now. Well, to put, put a solid door in, and that's fine. Um, so, 
uh, that that will alleviate that problem. Uh, the solicitor's office is supposed to move down to the old uh, Yarborough and Baker building at the end of the property that we own. Uh, I hope that's going to happen sometime in my lifetime. That'll be part of this whole proposal. Yeah, my lifetime. You hear me? <laughs> I've been waiting for three years. My lifetime. We get them off the floor, fourth floor. That really does leave that floor for family court. I don't know how Scott uh, wants to configure it. I don't care. I just think that's something we work out. Um, as to the fifth floor. I would I would really want us to look at the possibility of dropping those ceilings, Mr. Stewart, uh, and making that ceiling to where uh, we don't have all that air going up to nowhere. Plus, the lighting in that courtroom is atrocious. Uh, I almost need a flashlight to be able to, use, to do anything in there. Uh, and if we drop that ceiling, uh, we we'd have really good lighting uh, and. Um, that's, that's just a suggestion I have. The lighting was part of the, uh, with the HVAC, it was a lighting change as well. The only problem we see with dropping the ceiling in there, because that was our first thing, drop the ceiling, we got plenty of room to do all kind of HVAC stuff up the top, because there's only a little bit of space otherwise. Or the windows to the side and the woodwork is there, that would have to be changed, you wouldn't have as high windows. So if that's not an issue, we could certainly drop the ceiling. Matter of fact, that's the simplest for us actually is it. to drop that ceiling, yeah. cut off the windows at a level, yeah. and Definitely. <clears throat> yeah. well, that's what I would do too. I would well, we'll, bring, we'll probably bring y'all that as a pro proposal because that we can get that together quicker than this RVR system that we're trying to get together to maintain the high ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just see no need, re no need for the high ceiling. Oh, no other courtroom today has a ceiling like other that. Other than the look and the his the. the oh. His it doesn't no. function make any difference. You're absolutely right. Well, right. Well, my take on it is that the only person who has actually worked in here who knows what's going on is, is Bobby. Yeah. And I I wouldn't want him telling me how to run a furniture store warehouse. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, whatever he thinks is a good idea, whatever Scott is willing to do, yeah. the clerk of court, I am, I am perfectly fine to we, go we along. We will with travel that path because that. We were a little hesitant to be making plans to drop those ceilings. Was scared that that was part of the nostalgia of the courtroom, and it will change the nostalgia the in that building. I got you. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> cried when they moved it, Walmart. It, uh, it will make it very easy for us to do H back in that room compared to what we were looking at doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Much yeah. Much There's no nostalgia now, in that room. Have you looked at? Have we changed out the LED for months? Uh, no, not that, we were looking at LED light. Make sure it's daylight bulbs. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on LED daylight. White light yeah, versus yellow light. And then, well, yeah, the LED daylight. I mean, it's just like outside. So, we and, 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 and the only other thing I ask. Is you replace the chairs that the lawyers sit in because they've been um, here since 1965. Uh, and I wouldn't be sure. We need to keep those, Bobby. We need to keep those. You were talking about security. One thing well, we have broken a couple of them. One thing we had Otis Elevator there just last week or week before last. One thing we're looking at for the security of getting in and out the building. I don't know if you've ever paid attention. But if you're in the basement, there's a little gate that goes out to the basement. And you can't get in there. I don't know if you've ever paid attention, but if you're in the basement, there are two keys, and I'm not talking about firefighter operation. There's two keys that can take those elevators from individual to group operation. We can simply use keys, and security can use keys. We can have it set to where there's a divider that will divide the elevators when the judge is coming in, and then whoever's escorting them puts the key in. That elevator never stops to see anybody else, puts them off on the fourth floor, have a divider there that go into their area of chamber, yeah. and then the family court judge and the circuit judge, they would need an escort in and out the building, which they're going to get anyway. Yeah. Um, but with that priority service, they should never see anybody else. That's right. When they yeah. step outside the public, that's what yeah. it is. But I mean, they got to step outside the public. Something's right. going on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we we can work on all those things. And we had Otis there, and they're getting us a price on okay. that key system at every floor. So right. there'd be one for the fifth floor, fourth floor, and all that's available. Yeah. Um, so all those things are coming in, 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 the, in our plans for we need to upgrade and do everything we can. But we didn't want to write off that y'all may desire to do something. But what I'm hearing is work on all these things and don't don't put any time and effort right this minute into preparing for another referendum. Because no. it does take some time and effort to prepare. Right. And so what are we talking about now? This is what I, I have two questions. Specific. Number one, 
we've done renovations in the treasurer's office, and now you said it's probate. probate. Mm -hmm. Have you had any other requests mm -hmm. from anybody else? Oh, yeah, else? everybody else. Oh, See, everybody. I knew that. I told you that was going to kind of Every, Everybody else. So do you have any present necessities from somebody? Because when you do something with one person right. and don't do it, it's we, not we are, Well, Everybody has that something now. We changed all the carpet in the auditor's office a year ago. Um, we, um, gosh, I'm trying to think. Other places, all the carpet in the tax collector's office was changed. All the good treatment. All the good treatment. I'm talking about actually making services better for okay, people. You're right. Okay. Um, well, there's a request to put another set of counters in, and we're looking at that. But some of this will require structural changes inside the building. I have a, I have a concern with counters. Right. Plus, that kind of gets you away from the people. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you walk into a, an office. That's the way I feel, and I don't know about nobody else. Um, well, I don't know if you're talking about you like them or don't like them, but the, the treasurer's I, office. I got question marks about a, a banking but, system but where you trade money. Them. Where yeah. you trade money, that counter system is kind of a security and a staple in trading out money when people are making payments. And also, remember now, those changes made in the treasurer's office were totally paid for out of a particular fund that I didn't have to go find any money. Okay, <laughs> I'm not asking you that. Okay, you okay. I, I know that's what you told us in the beginning. But I, what I'm saying is, it's only fair. Oh, yes. Of, Nobody's know, been done unfairly. No. Okay. No one's been done so, unfairly. So we Matter of fact, some, of these, of some of these other offices had changes, and then that actually might have spurred the treasurer's office to say, well, you know, I've got a pot of money that can specifically be done, used to do things, and I'd like to see, and, and he has control of where that money is spent or not spent. Okay. Right. So I would actually say the, the things that started it occurred in these other offices before it. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm just and I do appreciate Mr. Kirkwood's remarks because I know he's been in that courthouse a long time. But the thing that I'm that family court is a mess. Oh yeah, that's when why you we get off the elevator. They're just standing we're, everywhere because they don't have enough weight in the space. Some court, things court. that we need to kind of concentrate on. It's the most right dangerous courtroom court 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 because you you just don't know what's going on with those family problems and those judges. But that, and we've been working on that for months because before we could ever get, and we're still not ready to give y'all a proposal because we had to get that law library cleared out. Okay. We had to go through the process of everybody agreeing to get rid of those books, and <laughs> it's time consuming and tedious. And I'm not totally really sure. happy with just regular consumers, the regular the public going on elevators with the prisoners. So that has to change sometime. Mm -hmm. the key. Well, just just like with the judges, <laughs> the key system of bringing the prisoners in and out, just yeah. like you can pull, we plan to be able to, so you can pull something to isolate the judge from coming in, that same elevator can be used to transport the prisoners up and down in an isolated okay. fashion. Right. Uh, I, absolutely. So we can set our time up for the prisoners to be there, say like from 8 o'clock to 9, and nobody else can. Well, well, they all got ready to communicate back and forth. There is no, no reason why it can't be coordinated that, all right, yeah. the judge is in the house, the judge is not in the house, we're fixing to move prisoners. And when they turn that key and go to individual operation, they're in total control of that elevator. Nobody else can call it, stop it. So if an elevator was brought down to the, and it had to go to the fifth floor, and see, that's something else we're going to try to work out is some holding area. I don't know if we would get the fifth and the fourth floor holding area, but some type of holding area so that, it's not just in the stinking hallway in some cases, because sometimes they bring too many people up there to put them all in one of those little rooms, so they sit out on the bench. Well, I mean, the, the grand jury uh, court is now a courtroom. It's a mini courtroom. Right. Um, frankly, it would be a great holding area if we could get the other stuff out of there. I mean, frankly, the, the courtroom that we have is too big. And, you know, if we wanted to spend some money and make it two courtrooms, uh, one for juries and one for non-juries. Um, mm -hmm. Then we would free up that side of the building for a large holding area. Uh, but I mean that's you know that's something y'all could look at. We start talking to the clerk about that. Yeah. Have that discussion. I mean we don't have any jury trials hardly anymore. Civil courts handled by mediation. And, right, other than that trial that Judge that Judge Toll had on uh, talcum powder. <clears throat> I don't know that we've had any more civil trials. And in criminal court, well, I'll leave that to my normal comments about the non-working facilities. So we'll, we'll continue to work with the clerk and work on proposals to bring in. I think the next big thing we'll see is that chain proposal to remodel that fourth floor, get family court on yeah. that fourth floor, get the solicitor into the other building. Now, there'll still be an office they would have there, a single office for court situations. 
but all of their office space and meeting space and all would go into the other building. And what you can do is you can take that public defender office and divide it back up like it used to be. One, there was one door for the public defender and there was one door for the solicitor. Uh, when we moved the public defender's office to the courthouse for a few years, we took over all of it, but it can be divided up because they've got their building back in Mazingo and they can have an operating room for court there. The solicitor can take the next spot. That's why you had two doors. Mr. Gordon, I think it's a can't work. I, I, I echo what Lee said. I, I don't know anything about the facility you've been working, so those of you who work there, those of you who know from your experience, I don't mean your expectation for that. But just offered some feedback to people go in criticism about the number of you know, what was county employees do we ever take up so many parking places? So I don't know if there's something that we have or that we have that open up some parking places on the street making some and I, again I don't know the other work is now who's if there's any restriction or first time you know the signed off spaces or the fact that employees will park in the well, two we, hour parking spaces. The general comment is there's a lack of public parking oh. for somebody coming out of town to go to the courthouse so pay taxes or whatever. So I don't know if there's something to look at that if that property we any property we own over there can be used to help with that. Might be able to work something out on that turning some of that property into a parking lot or yeah. an improved parking lot. <clears throat> Maybe the city can get some use out of it too or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you're the you're always aren't supposed you're to there. park on the square unless they're coming in out of the building because they're not from that building to go, you know, that type of thing. Well, the bank, they even didn't know there would be plenty of parking there. I mean, I think we're also, uh, you can't get the parking space right in front of people to move on. But, you know, you know, I tell you a story about my mother. Driving, and she would come up and her shop, and there was belts, there was big seaboards, and there was cops. She would park in front of belts, she'd go into belts, she'd get in her car, she'd drive a half a block and park in front of big seaboards. She'd get out, take a half a block and park in front of cops, because she wouldn't walk around, she would just get in the car. Of course, all three of them are gone now, so. and so is she. <laughs> but that, that was the mentality of darling Tony. Any other comments? We're working against them. Speaking of the bank, are we in the process of thinking about buying a bank and putting some other offices in the bank? A couple of y'all have mentioned that as an idea. I'm not sure exactly what you put over there. I, I would tell you that my opinion, it's my opinion only, that the treasurer, the auditor, the assessor, and the tax collector really all need to stay in the same building. These people go from the treasurer's office, to I need to get high miles, they run around to the auditor, then they go back to the treasurer. Or they go upstairs, do something with the session, they got to come back downstairs and order to get the tax letters changed, and they got to go to the treasurer and pay it. <coughs> uh -oh. So yeah, those things really, it. if you were to say, it's a, oh, it's a bank, let's move the treasurer over there, and you didn't move these other individuals or these other offices, now people have got to go in and out, cross the street, back and forth. So I don't know, so, I think there's about 8,000 square feet over there. Uh, is there an elevator over there? I'm no, I don't think there is. I think we'd have to put an elevator in. But first of all, you got to get the bank out and see if they're going to put it up for sale or right. what they're going to do. How about the right eats? Go over that in there. That is an right. interesting matter. Thank you, Sherman. I'm coming back from, from a meeting. Um, uh, looked at that building. We went through Burger King. Drive. Well, didn't we go through Burger King Drive or something? We were driving by. Uh, drive by. Um, and thought, you know what? That's an awfully big shell building that for... A remodel on the outside, got a nice parking lot. Now you could you could go and move your treasure audit all those together. You could take administration out, put a, an economic development office there. And I know we fix to get a whole nother area, but uh, maybe we still maintain that office over here. But some type of economic development office in the county. Um, you can do all kinds of things. I do have no idea. I haven't asked anybody about the price of that building. I feel sure Rite Aid doesn't want that building anymore. Is that in the city limits? No, that no. was just outside the city limits. Um, so we will look and we will dig, just like we've dug a little bit into the bank building. The initial, they will sell at some point because they don't intend to keep it, but they don't know how much and don't know when. So you know, that, that's, that's kind of the well, gist of what we got. That Rite Aid building for the proposed 
his four million dollars from the historical commission that was wanting a museum. Yeah, that I don't want to try to push that. I don't want to be seen as trying to tell somebody what to do with that four million dollars. Oh, well, yes, <laughs> oh, well, yes well, people have already seen that. Okay. And so, you know, that might be something they look at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably get more use out of it. Well, because the, the um, standalone, the parking, the, all of those types, of, it's easy to find. It's center. To, it's central to the so the Lamar schools can make it there easy. Parkland schools can make it there easy. You know, you got plenty of parking for bus coming in and out. Plenty of parking for bus coming out. I mean, it's it is a what made it a nice retail location makes it a nice retail museum right. type location. So I don't know if I mean again that was just. Thrown out there, I got you. people thrown out there. So, but all that to say, I, I really think if when you start talking about moving some additional things out the courthouse, there are certain offices that really, while they may be independent elected officials, you don't want them to have one moved without the other one moving right. because of public public use. Well, I, mean, I think those right four there. should stay together. I agree with you. Do they necessarily have to stay in the courthouse? No, no they, they don't. don't. They don't have to. Because once you get them out of the courthouse, then people don't have to go through. Security. Right. And my pants have almost fallen down a couple of times here. Just <laughs> take it off my belt. Sorry. So, um, and I don't want to embarrass the world. And I'm not sure if they would all fit in the bank builder or not. Well, I don't know. I don't really know that layout in there. I, I, what I've seen you walk in, there's a lot of teller space, <clears throat> but you need office space for assessor and right. treasurer. I mean, an auditor. Second floor. Yeah. So we can certainly look at it some point. We don't have any Ms. plan Sam, to bring forward for that right this minute. Please. Any other questions, uh, concerns, comments? So with the Line A building, are we going to I will ask check into them? it. I'll check into it and ask, but it sounds like the historical commission might be on that same That's what I'm saying. We're going to ask them if they want the building? Yeah. Or? I'll ask if they talk about it. Like I said, I don't want to ask <laughs> the chief executive officer administrator to be trying to tell them what to do, but I am going to ask because I'm interested in it for another reason. Is there a legitimate interest that they'll be pursuing? I'll do that. Absolutely. Like, like Lucia said, said, first let's check and see how much taxes they pay. Well, according to who gets them more, he says, "Oh mercy!" But yeah, they're definitely paying taxes on that bill. That's for sure. Right. You, you think that's in the in the county and not the city? Well, I know Burger Burger, County. Burger unless it uh, switches on the street, Burger King's absolutely in the county. I know that. But I'm you think that's not, outside the streets in the city? I think it's in the city. It may be. I, I'll have to double check. It doesn't matter. I mean, no, no, we can look it up and see if you got city taxes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I go report the question? Right. What else we got? I want to ask about the other buildings. What about we got that? Mazango building, we got those buildings about to call them out. We are watching those other buildings, and the Mazingo building may be a building that will will warrant asking you to spend some of this on um, fund balance yeah. money for some upgrades and upkeep really on there. I'm going to look real quick and tell y'all whether the city taxes are letting in that particular strategy or not. Now that I'm pulling this up, I think I've already done this, and it's not, it's not going to let me in the network from here. Well, maybe it did. But we are watching those other buildings. I think there are a couple of things we'll have to do with that Hartsville Outreach building, some bathroom yes. work, but you know, yes. I don't know, five years, six, seven years ago, it had a good bit of work done to it. <clears throat> Though it's not a modern building by any means. I believe the server is not letting me in from here. It won't let me in. I'll have to look. Any other questions, concerns about the courthouse issue? I think I think we know where what direction we need to keep working on at this point. Yeah, I like we've got to have to anyway. Yeah, I think we'd be negligent if you know. So well, the reason we didn't do anything is because you know, in five years we're going to have a new courthouse. And so well, in the meantime, I think anything. a lot of the, it will it won't be free. There'll be millions of dollars invested in it, but with the elevator system changes, and I'm not talking about. How's the tree situation coming along? The tree situation. I haven't done anything else with the trees just yet, but I would love to replace those with crepe myrtles just well, like what's in front of here. I where we put, were put some sod down, get rid of, you know, all the squares, and we're not going to take it away from Sweet Potato Festival, of course, but there's four different versions of electrical outlets sticking up out the ground in right. here that should all be under the ground and secure. Level. Yeah. Um, We'll make sure we get a proposal together for that right after the third floor courtroom change, or the fourth floor courtroom change. 
because I'm going to get some quotes on doing that. Yeah. We've looked at the price of trees, and to get, you wouldn't want to put a, a five-gallon crate bottle there, but to get one that, that are mature adults, oh, it's probably that, we just got to get three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars a piece. So. We, I, I saw some online big nurseries that could deliver twenty five or thirty. Yeah, it is a big nursery. We talk about fifty eight hundred acres. There's one up. There's one up in the line. Uh, they actually cut down their trees when they get too big because people can't afford to have the um, that big tree move. The big tree move, and so I, when I went up there to pick up furniture, I'm driving it beautiful. We get. And they're out there cutting down these just beautiful. Trees. I'm like, why? I said, well, can't sell. But I, I really think some prettier trees are new and redo the electrical atlas, <clears throat> put in some sod with a little bit of a sprinkler there. I think it can be maintained. I don't know if you noticed it looks a little better than it did. Mm -hmm. And one thing we're doing with the prison camp is they're going to start coming two days a week and they're going to go through up there and keep that neat clean. Oh, There's no sure. sense. And, our prison camp not being able to take care of our buildings first and getting that stuff Make sure we're on the edge. Could use a good sandblasting once you get through too. They did they did try to pressure wash them and that might be something else that rains a, a change on the brick overlay out there because we got kind of got a hodgepodge of concrete. And yeah. There's a on the sandblasting that there's a new thing called a hydroblast that has the and so it uses water with the um, sand. And you lay down a tarp, and the water comes down, and so you don't have all the dust blowing anywhere. Um, it's, it's a pretty neat, pretty neat system. They had it set up at the car show, and the guy did an antique car in the parking lot, drove the car off of it, and rolled up his little um, tarp. tarp, and there was all the, the material there, and um, it was it was pretty neat. I mean, it, you could, for me to you, you could sandblast it and, and not be a, have any problems. So, I mean, it, and it was fairly cheap for what it was. I don't have anything else unless y'all have something else to say. Where are we going? The cog is still working on something. <laughs> 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 we did not plan lunch today. Like we did before. We didn't plan it all day meetings. Oh, see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a little profile. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Where you want us to go? Okay. Okay.